and get your poly tube that fits inside the brass tubing. You just slide that in. I've already burned one in, so it's ready to go. The next step is to burn the other end. And you just clip it well, about that much right there. And grab your needle. And you put your needle in. You got to make sure you use a needle because if you start to melt this without the needle in there, you'll close off the, the tube. And just a little bit of heat will run that poly tube right up against the brass and you're done. Now you got to wait for a second. Wait till it changes colors before you take the needle out. Um, it actually gets pretty hot and it melts. It actually melts the, the poly tube. And so there you have it. You've got your tube all ready to tie on. So I'm going to insert it in my vise. Not very far. Just far enough that it gets a good hold. Clamp it down. And I'm ready to go to work with my fly. So I'm using orange thread. I normally use black thread for this fly, but I'm using orange so you can see the thread work a little bit easier. Just go ahead and attach the thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a tail of rabbit almost right at the midpoint of the hook. So that hook's an inch long. We want to find a half an inch. Um, you just kind of measure it. It doesn't have to be precise, but I want to be in the middle of the hook with my thread. It looks like I'm there. And then we're going to add the tail. And the tail is just rabbit strip, just, just a rabbit strip. And uh, we want a little bit more than what you'd think you'd need because we're going to put our tail about that length right there, maybe uh, an inch and a half, length, length and a half of the tube. And then we're going to take and find the middle of that. Just, give it, what, just moisten it a little bit and lay it right on top. And then we're going to lash that down with a number of very good, firm, securing wraps. Now this isn't waste right here. We're going to use this part of the rabbit strip. So don't cut it off. Hang on to it. Once you've got it locked in there pretty good, we're going to move the thread forward to about half of what we've got there. So a quarter, quarter of an inch forward. And then we're going to wrap the rabbit around the tube all the way using every bit of it and then locking the end of that rabbit strip down with a couple really firm, too firm turns of thread. Okay, a good fly tire always has to make a recovery here or there. You know, breaking the thread isn't life-threatening or life-ending. Get our thread started back up through the bobbin and, and uh, just make sure that we when we save this, make sure that we're trapping both the tag end of the thread and the broken end of the thread. All right, we're back in business. Not a big deal. Just got to deal with it. Happens. Okay, then once you get to this point, what you want to do is you want to relieve any of the trapped rabbit with a brush. Stroke it up. 
And that right there is our tail. Now the next step, we're gonna add another um, layer. You could call it a collar, um, but another bunch of rabbit in front of the tail. And the reason why I do this is to, to kind of create a little bit of bulk up front. I don't want this to be a leech. I want it to be more like a, like a fish or, you know, with that teardrop shape. So we're going to add some more rabbit. And what I've done here is I've taken some rabbit strip and put it in a clip. And I'm just going to clip it right off the hide. And then I'm going to insert this into a dubbing loop. So our rabbit's ready. I'll just create oh, about a five, six inch dubbing loop. This isn't the easiest I'm trying to demo it like this, but we'll get it done. Um, and then I'm going to insert that rabbit right in the loop. So I've got my dubbing twister. I've got my loop ready. And I'm just going to insert the rabbit. And then give it a spin. And what this does is, you know, you could just wrap it with it on the hide, but, uh, you know, we want to create less bulk when we're tying this fly. And so by eliminating the hide, we eliminate some weight. Rabbit is not light. It's not a light material. To, so you don't want to over, overload your fly. So once you've got your dubbing loop filled with the rabbit, we're just going to wrap forward, pulling all the hairs rearward as we go. Keep wrapping forward. Now, as you as you move forward here, relieve any of the trapped hairs. Give it a hit with the brush. But then also pay attention to where you're heading with this. You don't want to overshoot or overcrowd the front portion of this fly because we've got two more materials we want to add, marabou and guinea. So there's our collar. You could call it a prop of rabbit. And we're good to go. You know, back when I first started designing this fly, um, that was it right there. I didn't do anything more. Just called it a double bunny and called it good with just the rabbit. Of course, it was tied on a hook. Um, but then I've learned over the years that, you know, propping and, and adding a little bit more movement with marabou and, and then a collar of guinea really enhances how this fly moves in the water. Okay, so there's our second bunch of rabbit. We'll do next is put in some marabou. And this is just a blood quill, a marabou blood quill. And I've stripped off the root, cleaned it all up. And I don't want a lot. You don't, just two things, too much rabbit, too much marabou, this fly isn't gonna work. So. Make sure that you, uh, you know, keep it to a minimum. Just don't pile it on. So I'm going to add, secure this in, tip first. I'll just cut off the excess up front and catch it. And then and, uh, and I'm going to just hackle this. So. Grab my hackle pliers. 
you know, sometimes the stem is long enough. You can do it without the hackle pliers, but hackle pliers do make it a little bit easier. I'm going to fold these fibers back as I start to wrap this forward. Like I say, I just want just a, just a hint of marabou. And I really don't care how it goes on because I'm going to, I'm going to force it to go back. And that rabbit will make, you know, that rabbit ensures that this marabou will stay where it's supposed to when it's swimming. So just keep on wrapping one, one turn in front of the last. And then as soon as you get to the point where there's no barbs left on the stem, you can go ahead and catch that stem and lock it into place. And give it a little tug, make sure it's in there. Work everything backwards and then tidy up your head. Now, if I get to a point where there's, there's stuff, I'm, I'm kind of, when it comes to the front part of the fly, I, I really like it to look good. So what I'll do is I'll take this cauterizing tool and I'll eliminate any loose ends um, before I wrap on the guinea. You know, if you don't have one of these cauterizing tools, oh, I tell you, it's a must. They're a great tool. You can do so much with them. Um, just a great tool to have on the bench. All right, so moving along, we've got our rabbit and our marabou on now. Now we're just gonna add a collar of guinea. And I'll take this guinea feather, and what I'm looking for is I'm just kind of gauge it to length. I want it to be a little less than half flowing backwards. Um, and I'll strip the stem clean. And then I'll pull the barbs back like that. And then that leaves that tip showing. And then I'll just clip that tip into a small wedge. And you just take that wedge and lock it right in. A couple of firm securing wraps. Now, what you want to make sure when you lock this feather in that the concave side of the feather is enveloping the fly. So the shiny part of the feather is facing up. And that will ensure that when we start to make these wraps, that they'll all flow backwards. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to fold as much of this together so that all the barbs are flowing rearward. And then I'm going to make my first turn. Now, as I make my first turn, you want to make sure that you rotate the stem to assist in getting those fire those those barbs to to flow back. Okay, now make sure that on that very first turn that you're not trapping. any of the guinea as you make that first wrap. And then just continue to work with that stem, rotating it into position. And if it doesn't look right, you know, you can just stop and start all over. You know, there's no pressure here. It's your tube, your fly. Just work till it looks right. And 
and then just make sure one turn in front of the last. I'm going to back it off. It looks like I didn't get there. That's a little bit better. But I mean, you just keep on working that hackle until it lays in in the way that you want it to. And then wrap till you're securing down nothing but stem. A couple of securing wraps. Pull on that stem to make sure that it's tight. Make sure it's what you want. Looks good to me. Then you can clip your tag in and build up a small, small head. Just check, make sure that you've got it all. And grab your whip finish tool, put a whip in it. Now this is this this has to not not it doesn't have to, but um, securing that head with head cement is a is highly recommended. Good move right at the end. Um, you just you put a lot of thread on there. And plus, I think it looks good. And then when you're happy with that, give it a second and let it dry. Okay, so while it's drying, I it, it, um, just wanted to cover a couple more things. Um, talk a little bit about hooks. Uh, the hook that I prefer for a tube is just a straight up tube fly um, hook with a straight eye. Short shank, um, the Umqua uh, TMC 784 and the BM. BN 5X, both are really good hooks and uh, can get the job done. So um, when I'm out on the water, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, or I, when I'm out on the water, I carry a number of different size hooks. Um, and I'll use different hooks for different, different reasons. Uh, the smaller the hook, the better, obviously, for the fish. But when you're like up in British Columbia where you're fishing for bigger fish or um, like on the clear water, somewhere where the fish are bigger, obviously you're going to have to use a, a bigger hook. So the next step is to add some junction tubing to the fly. I'm going to just take that junction tubing, cut just a small piece off. I don't measure it. It's no big deal. Just as long as you get enough to, to make it work. You slide that junction tubing on the rear of the fly. And this is kind of kind of one of the fun things about this and why I leave so much of the brass showing when you slide that dyed junction tubing up. It kind of makes a really cool effect and color. Um, but once you've got your tubing on and to the length you want, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a hook in this to give you an idea of what it looks like with a hook and there you have it the tail dragger i tie this fly i tie this fly in a number of different color combinations uh, green and black purple and pink and uh you know, there's, there's really no rules to it. You can tie it any way you want. It's simple, it's effective. And when I get one of these caught on the bottom, 
it's not that big of a deal. Simple, easy, very effective, fun to tie, fun to fish. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, good luck with your tying.